What's up everyone, it's Brian from the Exact IT Solutions YouTube channel. Welcome to another video where I educate you on all things cybersecurity, break it down to a level that most people understand. And today we're gonna to talk about zero trust and how it applies to cybersecurity and why should it matter and what the heck is it. Um, before I get into the video, remember, I do have my book coming out. You can get a copy of it down below in the description. I have a link. It's called Checkmate. I hope you get it. I'll send it to you for free. Um, and also like and subscribe to the channel. So without further ado, let's talk about Zero Trust and educate you about what it is. All right, guys, so zero trust when it applies to cybersecurity. What is it? Why is it important? Why do we even need to do it? Or why should we consider it? Um, you know, I've been around, I've been doing cybersecurity for probably well over a decade now, if I really think back to when I actually started dealing with security issues when it comes to computers and networks and websites and all that stuff. Um, and zero trust has been around for a while, but it's been, quite frankly, not the easiest thing to implement, um, especially from an administrator standpoint. But, you know, the good news is, is, you know, cyber criminals are getting better at what they do, but so are cyber defenders. Uh, and we have a lot of good technology out there today that helps us, you know, achieve zero trust at a lot of different levels. And I'm going to talk about a couple different levels today that are going to be important don't want to make this video too long, too drawn out, too boring, because um, God knows cybersecurity is boring enough as it is, but we need to do this stuff, right? Um, just like I use the analogy all the time of cars and safety, because I grew up with cars, and I remember, you know, the day when I could jump back and forth from the front seat to the back seat, and nobody cared. Well, today, um, if you saw some kid flying around and see the car, most people's reaction would be, why isn't that kid wearing a seatbelt? And most people, when they get in a car or an Uber today, they strap on their seatbelt. And, you know, 40, 50 years ago, that probably wasn't the case. We're going through a lot of that with cybersecurity, with technology. We're learning how to use technology. We all have to learn how to be more safe, better protect ourselves when we go online, use our seatbelts, make sure the airbags are installed and activated. That's really... The analogy that I use around cybersecurity. And there's this technology out there called zero trust, right? And zero trust is, is simply put, <clears throat> assume and trust nothing. Nothing runs or gets on the network without us saying that this is okay. And us could be you as an individual, it could be your IT department, it could be the company in general. But zero trust really is right now the only way you're really going to make a cyber criminal's day uh, not good or just annoying because they can't do what they want to do. They can't do what they do on most networks. Zero trust hamstring cyber criminals uh, more than anything that's out there right now. Um, and it's the way to go and it's what you should be doing for the cybersecurity in your business. Now, I look at things from two perspectives when it comes to zero trust. We have to zero trust things on the network. And then we have to zero trust things on every computer. So there's two different technologies we use for that. Now, back in the day, um, we used to be able to configure firewalls and routers to uh, for zero trust. We used to say, you know, okay, this firewall uh, doesn't have this MAC or this firewall allows these MAC addresses. And it could be thousands if you're in a large environment. Um, allows these MAC addresses to communicate on its network. If it ha doesn't have these MAC addresses, uh, and if you don't know what a MAC address is, real quickly, it's kind of like a house address for your for your house. It's a similar thing for a computer. Every uh, computer network device has a unique uh, home address that translates to an IP address. The MAC address and the IP address kind of marry up. So a MAC address is not an IP address. So I just want to make sure you're clear on that. But it is like a home address. It's a way that we can identify devices on a network, so to speak similar to how 911 or you know the the trash company would identify your house um, and these MAC addresses are ways that we can prevent or permit people from getting onto networks that was the old way of doing it 
there's a good news is, is there's a lot of new technology out there that doesn't require somebody capturing a MAC address and putting in a rule to allow that traffic or that device to communicate on that network. Um, there's a lot of different ways this can be done today. And even so, you can control um, networks and you can do zero trust from the cloud where you have computers all over the world. Um, you know, people at home working, servers in Amazon, servers in Microsoft, servers somewhere else, servers in your office, computers in your office. These can all be joined together in a cloud-based zero trust network. If you want, want to learn more about that, you can reach out to my company. This is something that we do all the time. Um, the other zero trust that you're going to want to consider right now is zero trust on your endpoints or on every computer that runs. And the way that this works is pretty simple. Every application that runs on your computer runs what's called a process or multiple processes. These processes, think of them like mini programs that run behind the scenes that make your programs work. Google Chrome, for example, runs as a process called Chrome.exe. Now, if you open your Google Chrome and you have tons of extensions installed, maybe you have four, five, six, ten tabs open uh, when you fire up your Chrome or whatever, um, typically you're going to see multiple instances of Chrome.exe running in your task manager. If you're familiar with Windows Task Manager, all those little things that pop up when you run that are, are your processes, are processes or applications that are running uh, in your on your system. The really cool thing about zero trust that we have in cybersecurity is the ability to permit processes that run that we know of, that we know are good, and deny everything else. And what you're doing in zero trust is you're saying, if a new process runs that we don't know about or that we haven't verified previously, block it. Right, block it, don't let it run, um, and let us review that and decide if that's something we want running on this system or not. And this is a really good layer of zero trust to add along with kind of the cloud-based or local network-based zero trust. Um, what this will do a lot of times is we'll prevent things like third-party breaches from causing a problem, like, like your software that you bought from a legitimate vendor that has a problem and somebody built a back door into it and then they try to access your system using the back door and deploy things and run things, more than likely a zero trust uh, application is gonna block that, right? Is gonna say, no, you can't run because I don't know who you are or what process this is running. Even though it's embedded and running through a legitimate application that you've permitted, because this will spark up a new process in your on your computer in your system that's going to cause this program to not run if you have this security in place so zero trust security on the endpoint is very very important it'll also stop ransomware it'll stop anything from running even things that you download from the internet and try to run unless you disable it or you know, put it in what we call learning mode so it can learn like what's new on the system and what it needs to learn to permit. Um, outside of that, nothing's gonna run on your system at all that's new, that's a process. Um, this is different than um, antivirus because antivirus actually scans the file once it's on there and says, hey, this is doing something bad. I'm gonna block it, I'm gonna stop it. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna let this thing do what it's trying to do. Um, it is actually preventing an action. Zero trust doesn't prevent any actions other than the fact that it says, are you good or are you bad? You're not in my good list, so you must be bad. And that's basically how it works. It says, it's not there to decide if something's good or bad. It's there to say, are you on the allowed list? Or are you on the block list? And if you're, if you're not on the allowed list, then you're by default on the block list. So it's trust nothing and assume that whatever's trying to run is a breach and that's how you handle it until you determine that whatever's trying to run is not a breach. And if you do these things at the network level and at the computer level, you're gonna be much, much more secure. You're gonna make cyber criminals' jobs very difficult. You're gonna make them have a really bad day. And quite frankly, you're just gonna make them move on to another target. So implement zero trust security. If you need help with this stuff, guys, reach out to my company, xitx.com. But more importantly, remember, I'm giving away for a short period of time 
my new book, Checkmate. It's free. You can sign up for it. There's a link in the description. And like this video and subscribe to our channel. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Thank <music> you.